they got me, man. They got me crying. Second episode of uh, Last of Us. I knew it was coming, and it still got me crying. So, yeah. Um, time to do the review. I just finished watching the episode, and whew, just epic doesn't even come close to describing this episode. It's it's just following in the footsteps of the first episode. I said the first episode was the best piece of television I had ever seen, and this second episode follows that up with just a hard-hitting sequel, basically. And and knowing that we have another seven episodes of this just has me going, oh my god, <laughs> we're going to be in for a wild ride. So anyway, strap in. We're going to do uh, the review of The Last of Us Episode 2 today. Um, I don't do spoiler free, so if you don't want things spoiled, make sure to uh, go watch the episode first and then come back and uh, watch this. But in the meantime, if you've already watched it, let's go. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon if you haven't already done so. Support any way you can. Memberships, super chats, super thanks, Patreon page, all that good stuff. Let's dive in here. Move this window over just a little bit. Get all my show notes ready. So we start off this episode fairly mundanely. Um, we get this scene of just before the infection is hit. We're in Jakarta, India. Um, there's a restaurant scene. People are, are enjoying their breakfasts, lunches, etc. And these military police come in and everybody gets all freaked out. And they go straight to this elderly woman who's back in the back eating by herself. And they drag her off into a car um, politely. But um, she's in the, in, the, in the car scared asks why she's what she's done to be arrested and they're like oh no we're not arresting you you're this doctor of um, mold science stuff that you teach at the university and we need you to come with us um, because you, you you know these these fungi so she gets to uh, the lab and she studies a sample under a microscope that she realizes is um, Cordycep, and she asks why they've sprayed the slide with this thing, and they're like, because it's from a human sample, and she's like, that's impossible, because this can't survive in human flesh, and we're transported back to that, you know, mentally anyway, not, we don't show this on the show, but if we go back to the first episode, and we have the scientists who, in the 60s, were talking on live television about how if it ever spread to humans, we'd be screwed, and they take her then into another room where they show her a body of a of a woman who has been shot in the head and she's been bitten on the ankle and she starts to cut up the wound and sees that it's you know the spores inside and um she's checking it she wants to know if the bite came from a human they say yes and she goes to check the throat of the corpse and she pulls it out and we get the writhing spaghetti which is like kind of like jumping at her looking for a new host and she's inside like a hazmat suit but she freaks the hell out and she's like get me out of this room and they start to give us a little background on what had happened here which is basically um a grain factory on the west side of the city and she's like it's a perfect substrate so we're getting you know background information on how this all got started here um apparently a woman turned bit a bunch of workers they all had to be shot um, but the scientist asks, who bit the woman? And they don't know the answer to that question. Meanwhile, there's also 14 other workers who are missing. And she's like, what, what, what do you want from me? And they're like, we want you to you know, make a vaccine. And her hands are trembling. She's like, there's no medicine for this. There's no vaccine. There's no cure. You need to start bombing right away. Bomb everything. Bomb the city and everyone in it. It's the only way to stop the infection. And then we end with her, you know, wanting to go say, you know, her bye to her family and telling them to bomb everything was just like, oh, my God. So then we go from there into the present day and we're back to Ellie and Joel and Tess and, and Ellie's waking up and Joel's got a <laughs> gun trained on her and they don't trust her. They've been up all night, um, Joel and Tess, wanting to see if if her if she's going to turn and if her arms gotten any worse and so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's, it's a terrifying moment for them. And they look at the kid and they're like, you know, she made it through the night is what Tess says. So maybe this is real. And Joel's like, dad, no, it'll happen sooner or later. But Tess is starting to buy into it. She's kind of seen what Ellie really is in terms of the potential. But Joel is just like better her than us mentality. He wants to take the kid back, find another way to get the battery. Cause you got to remember his only goal at this point is 
I need to find my brother. I don't care about this kid. She's just cargo. Um, I just want to find my brother. That's his only goal in life right now. Um, they get to this. There's some comedic moments in this episode, which is great. It's great to sort of provide a lighthearted um, sort of snack fare between the heavy moments because. Oof. Um, but they're eating breakfast here, and Joel and, and Tess are, like, munching on, like, nasty old beef jerky, and the kid's got, like, a chicken sandwich. And they're like, is that is that chicken? And Ellie's like, yeah, Marlene got this from smugglers. I'm guessing not from the two of you. And I'm just like, oh, that's a sick burn, kid. And, um, we get this moment where um, Tess confronts ellie and she's like joel and i aren't good people you know we're doing this for us so you know tell me true now i'm talking to you like an adult why are you so important and there's something here about you know there's a firefight base camp out west they're working on a go to cure joel isn't buying any of it he's heard this before it's just rumors it's bullshit this isn't going to end well tess we just need to go back but tess really wants to finish this um regardless if it's real or not because she's she's had enough and Joel is like, if that kid so much as twitches, and then Ellie's just like, Aah. not funny, but also funny. <laughs> just messing with Joel. So Ellie has a really good question that she asks in the middle of this, which is why they didn't get sworn once they got into the city. And they don't answer her yet, but we do get an answer later on. But it, what's cool is when they come out here, we get this open view of the city, um, which is really cool. A great daytime shot of all the buildings and bomb craters and when uh, tesk is asking ellie about how she you know got bit she tells her about this you know mall story where she snuck into a mall just to see what's inside and tess is like how old are you she's like 14 and tess doesn't care because she treats her like an adult she's like well damn you got some balls on you sister which i thought was really kind of cool um it's also making me want to rewatch Fringe because I haven't seen that show in years, and Anna Torv is just a badass actress. Um, so again, going back to why this city isn't swarming with infected, like all the rumors say, and they're going across this overpass, and as they're talking about it, you hear this guttural scream howl come from somewhere, and they don't know where, but they're super wary now, um, and they're on their way to this hotel that they have traditionally used to do this route because it lets them get up to the 10th floor and examine the route that they're going to be able to take that's free of infected because um, typically the infected are you know within these groups um, so turns out their normal route is blocked they get up to the 10th floor and there's a cave-in Tess goes up alone and I'm already starting to have a nervous breakdown at this point because when the party is separated is when bad shit happens and we get this expose moment where Joel starts talking about you know, because cause Ellie's asking him questions about the infected. And he's like, you know, most last a month or two. Some of them are walking around for 20 years. She wants to know what it feels like to kill an infected, knowing that they were human before. And then she presses him about the guard as well, because she's probing for who Joel is as a person. And they hear a noise. It's Tess. She opens the door, found a way. But she needs to show him something. And it turns out that there's a huge pile of infected right where they need to go. And... The way they explain it is there's this building right there and you have all these infected on the outside kind of leaning into the building and that's in, there's an infected underground inside is where there's you know this big mold hive basically and people who are coming in from outside stragglers come here to find shelter and get infected when they come in and so it's just slowly but it's, you know day by day that the infection rate is growing in that city because of, of continual new people showing up. So stragglers, but still, and they also get this explanation of how everything's connected. And if you step on a fungus somewhere, it doesn't infect it, wake up somewhere else and they know where you are and you little kid immune or not can still be ripped up, ripped apart. Um, so knowing now that they can't go the way they wanted to go um, because it's clogged with infected, Joel suggests a museum. Um, they get there, the main door is covered in fungus, but it's all old and dried up, which means everything's probably dead inside. They're going slow, and when they get in, Ellie finds this fresh corpse, but she's like, what killed it? That didn't look like anything. That didn't look like it didn't get bit. Like, what's going on? There's blood all over. Tess is like, maybe he was just wounded outside, then come in here. And Ellie starts asking questions, and Joel's like, shut up. Um, and this is when we get this whole, we got to go silent mode, and I'm like, 
oh, are they going to introduce clickers? And they totally introduced clickers. And, oh, man, the corpse and fungus choke stairwell, super intense. There's a cave-in behind them. Now they're trapped in this room. And here we come to the <laughs> clickers. Ugh, multiple clickers. Ellie's, you know, freaking out, and but they're trying to keep her quiet, but they get this clicker that comes right by them, and Ellie can't hold it, and she does a gasp, and it hears her, and they've got a fight now, and gunfire, and man, they did a great job with the clickers. And I read somewhere that it's the same people who did the motion capture from the game here in the show, which is really cool for continuity. So um, we get through all of this. They get out a window. Um, Tess has got a busted up ankle now, twisted her ankle, and they're wrapping it up the kid got bit and joel's freaking out at this point and tess finally loses it with joel um she's like you need you need to just start believing in something for once and believe in this kid and um as they climb down the ladder there's this really cool sequence where this is right after tess has given this speech to joel and tess goes down first because she's like screw you let's just go we gotta go and she's leading them off and and Ellie follows down the ladder, and as Joel is watching Ellie go down the ladder, he glances down at his watch on his wrist and then shakes it. And it's kind of like I don't know if this is my interpretation of it. It's like he's he's feeling a connection. He's like he's seeing Ellie and remembering something about his daughter or feeling some sort of feelings, right? And he looks at his watch and shakes it. And to me, that was like shaking it off like shake off those emotions joel like you this isn't you can't you know no no emotions are allowed shake it off and then he falls him down I, and i don't know if that's the intent that they wanted with that shot but that's what i interpreted from it i think that's one of the cool things about watching film is that you can interpret things how you want um anyway um they gotta move get get on before it gets dark and they get to the rendezvous where the firefly squad, squad is supposed to be only yeah, it's not good. There's blood everywhere. They make their way inside the building. They find that the whole group's been shot. And um, what happened? Joel's looking around going, that one's infected. So it looks like there was a firefight. Like the healthy ones tried to fight off the infected ones and it didn't work. Um, so they all died. And Tess is freaking out. She's like, there's got to be a map. Come on, come on. And Joel's like, come on, it's over. Let's go home. And she yells back, that's not my fucking home. And I'm like, wow. Like, she's just finally like, I've had enough. And then they drop the bombshell, which I knew was coming. But I honestly didn't know, you know, it comes, it is what it is. Comes, comes early in the game, too. Um, and this is why I said, you know, spoiler alert at the beginning of my episode she's like, our luck had to run out sooner or later. And this is when Ellie goes, oh, no, she's infected. And it turns out, yeah, she got bit on the neck. Joel doesn't want to believe it until she shows it to him. And he's just, he's totally melting. You know, he's having a meltdown at this moment. And this, this is the scene where I started bawling like a baby. And I like just, I knew it was coming. And I was already starting to cry, you know. And... Tess is like yelling at Joel, look at the kid's arm, look at the kid's arm. You know, we both got cut and bit at the same time and her arm hasn't done anything. And look at my neck. It's already, you know, like this cluster of infection because it only takes like, you know, 10 or 15 minutes or something if they bit in the neck. I forget what it was. Not that long. Um, and she's like, this is real, Joel. The kid hasn't turned. This kid is real. You've got to get her to Bill and Frank. And I never asked – just this whole scene. I never asked you for nothing. Not to feel the way I felt. You need to shut the fucking listen because listen, I don't have time. This is your chance. You get her there. You keep her alive and you make it all right. All that shit we did. Make it right. And I'm like – I'm crying. I may cry again right now. Um, and just what an ending. Um you know, as they're having this emotional scene, one of the guys that's infected starts getting up and coming after him, and Joel shoots him in the head, and then as he falls down, the tendrils come up from the ground because it's already started to create the the the, the trail back. And then we get this amazing shot of the horde of infected waking up somewhere else, and they're all running towards where they're at coming to horde and Joel knows and he looks out and he sees and he turns around and Tess is like knocking the caps off the diesel fuel barrels and she's spilling the diesel out over the floor and the the, the grenades and um you know this is just this crucial moment where 
she's like, what are you doing? And she's like, making sure they don't come after you. Save who you can, Joel. And those are her finally words, final words to him. Save who you can. And he grabs Ellie and he drags her off. And she's screaming, don't leave Tess. Don't leave Tess. We can't leave her. And, of course, Joel knows what it's like. And this scene where Tess is like, the horde, the horde is running into the building and Tess's lighter won't light. And she's like backing up against the pillar and like it won't work. And one of the infected sees and comes over and does like the kiss to her and like starts shoving the, the like the fungi are going into her throat and down. And like the whole time, like her eyes are like looking down at the lighter and she's starting to twitch. And she's like, come on, lighter, you know, as she's turning. And then at the last second, the lighter lights, it drops we get an exterior shot with Joel and Ellie as the building explodes and flames are everywhere. And Joel just looks on with this tortured look and then just turns around and walks off and Ellie's supposed to follow. And that's the end of the second episode. And I'm just like, Oh my God, like fuck, just, just hitting you. It's like one, two sucker punch. Just, jab jab uppercut um oh what an episode 10 out of 10 i just i'm still kind of reeling from it and the thing is i know i have to watch it again with chris like today or tomorrow later on today um depending on her schedule and knowing that i, that I have to watch again it's just like oh man um so a great episode as always uh, i can't wait to continue this show it's just beat by beat pretty much the same as the video game and i and i gotta say this is one of the purest adaptations i've ever seen and it works so well like subscribe hit that bell icon to get more don't forget to support if you can memberships down below super chats super thanks all those things patreon page discord check out the links down there see you next time everybody peace